So this is the highlight that that I'm going to uh, share with uh, uh, everyone today. Uh, the result of that poll earlier, um, <clears throat> it's actually 50-50. Yeah? Uh, most of them say, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, about a handful of y'all did say that you are, you, are, you know what it is. Huh? Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for letting me know that some of y'all do know what is LMS is all about. Well, um, the Unimas, the current Unimas LMS has changed a uh, lot. Uh, we will be sharing uh, how do you address uh, or what I put here as nomenclature or the naming convention of the present uh, status of our LMS. Uh, so we will address that first so that in the future when we tell uh, that particular name, we will know what are we referring to. Huh? And then uh, our, our second session will be on uh, familiarizing with this uh, upgraded Moodle system uh, in our current uh, ELIP. Um, we'll also address what is eLeap is all about. Huh? And we will definitely go through in detail regarding blended learning checklists. Uh, and number four, I'm kind of excited about number four. Uh, we will review uh, what is the, this is the first time uh, when I'm uh, the e-learning coordinator, I'm trying to do this uh, review uh, the past result huh? and see what we can learn from that, uh, that particular uh, um, thing that we have obtained. Huh? The result that we have obtained um, and number five would be uh, that will be a sharing of uh, what are the meaningful thing that you can actually do uh, on eLeap and also in WhatsApp hmm? since uh, many people are using WhatsApp uh, to to be with our students uh, currently yeah? so these are the little things that uh, uh, I would like to address um, uh, and then finally if you have any question the questions you can ask anywhere uh, feel free to uh, interrupt me in any of these uh, uh, sessions and then uh, address. And if you, if we all agree, then we will have a break uh, maybe after the third session. Okay, um, let's go on to look at uh, the learning management system. Now, <clears throat> this uh, at the moment, uh, there are actually uh, four, maybe five, like, if you don't count the student uh, access. Uh, there are actually four major uh, versions of this uh, so-called eLeap. Huh? eLeap, uh, the leap stands for Learning Enhancement and Advancement Platform. And uh, we have uh, four versions, but I will be actually addressing three of them uh, in detail uh, regarding how to access it and all that. I, I'm sure that most of y'all have already uh, able to access uh, this and uh, if some of y'all who has not accessed it, uh, please pay attention how you go about doing it. And then uh, the one that I will not address uh, too much is uh, the MOOC, uh, ELIP MOOC. Okay. And uh, uh, the first thing is what we are going to call as ELIP, the name ELIP. Huh? ELIP just stands for one particular access. Okay. And ELIP, ELIP will have the current semester's courses offered only the current semester's courses will be in this particular uh, version, what we call as eLeap. Huh? And then the next one is, um, so called, if that is the current version that uh, uh, the, this semester is offering, therefore eLeap exam will mirror that. Huh? If you wish to use the eLeap exam uh, to have your exam, so therefore uh, those uh, courses can actually uh, access the eLeap exam. Now, why do you need to have these two separately? Eh? Um, this eLeap exam has got a better access. Uh, the database server has got a, uh, special features and so on. So therefore, that server has got a, a higher capacity and so on. So that's the reason why they have separated it. You can still do uh, quizzes and so on on the normal eLeap. Eh? Uh, but um, if you want to do exam uh, and in the exam week, especially in the exam week, therefore you are, you are encouraged to use the eLeap exam. Okay, we will see the access uh, to these uh, uh, versions. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say platform, they all are in the same platform, but they are different versions of the same platform. Now, eLeap Vault. Okay, this is the Vault. Um, now, this is very um, uh, different from what is eLeap. Huh? These are past courses. Okay, so therefore uh, the, the past courses that's uh, done um, and not 
uh, involved in this semester, they are all placed in this vault. So uh, what happens is that um, this vault has something like an archive. Um, I'm not sure how long they're going to uh, archive the, the, the courses there. Uh, maybe uh, for the time being, maybe two, three years, uh, they will keep it there. And then as it becomes older, probably they will be uh, deleted. Uh, but for the time being, they have everything there. Uh, they haven't decided uh, uh, how long they're going to retain it in, in the ELIP world. But one thing for sure, you can actually back up whatever courses in here uh, in the ELIP world and also on your own uh, normal ELIP. Huh? You can actually uh, back it up and then keep it as a file. And uh, later on, you can actually restore it. Okay, so um, maybe we can, uh, if you have the time, we'll, I'll show you how to do that. Huh? Now, um, next thing that I would address is, this is the important part now, where, how do you access it? Okay, how do you access it? I think most block coordinators know, uh, if you want to access eLeap, uh, e uh, you use your Unimask identity. Okay, and this is what I mentioned, uh, your MOOC is also one part of it. Uh, e Volt is there, exam, Unimask uh, eLeap exam. Uh, and uh, the student version is nothing to do with you, but uh, the, how the students are accessing it. And uh, what happens is that um, you can access ELIP using Unimas identity. Similarly, uh, when you want to access Un ELIP exam, you also use Unimas uh, identity. Okay, and uh, you will um, vote that uh, versions, ELIP and ELIP exam. You use Unimas identity. Uh, but what happens is that when you want to access the vault. And you want to access the vault, you can't use your Unimask identity. Okay, um, you will have to use the admin and guest. Now, what happens is that because you need to create a password, uh, there are two ways for you to actually uh, obtain this. Huh? One is you can actually uh, there's a manual. Uh, I will send it to everybody later uh, by email. Uh, using this manual, you can actually uh, do it yourself how to uh, go about uh, getting access to ELIP Vault. If you cannot do it through the manual, then you can directly email to come, come help desk, and they will assist you and they will give you a password. As far as I know, you still use your same username, but your password will be different. So you will have to remember this password. So that's how you go about doing it. Huh? So ELIP, you use Unimas identity. Whereas ELIP exam, you still use Unimask identity, but you, uh, ELIP uh, vault, you use a special uh, access password, ne? which uh, you can create yourself. Okay, I have got a next uh, interaction. Ne? Can you please uh, log on to uh, Mentimeter again? Please uh, interact ne? with the new uh, interaction that I'm uh, requesting. Okay, has anyone used uh, Mentimeter before, or uh, do you all are you all all aware, or do you want to share with me what, how am I actually uh, know what I'm doing, uh, what I'm getting, the feedback from you all? No, I've never used this. What is okay. it? Okay, thank you, uh, Siti, for the feedback. Now, uh, Mentimeter is just that uh, you have created uh, a question. Uh, therefore, uh, once you log on using this code, that question will pop up to that participants. And then this is what it will look like. Huh? This is the result that you're actually getting. Okay, this is what, what I'm getting huh? when you click on press. This is the response that I've actually got so far. Okay, so out of the 27 people around here, uh, 21 have actually responded. So I know uh, there's a handful of y'all who still haven't uh, responded, but that doesn't matter. Uh, normally you won't get a full uh, uh, response. Huh? Okay, so that's how a Mentimeter works. Huh? Mentimeter is a very good uh, um, a tool to use for interaction. Huh? If you want to get interaction directly from your students. Uh, similarly, uh, in the ELI platform, there's something called choice. Okay, choice can also be the same thing, but this is web-based, whereas choice in uh, ELI will be uh, our LMS-based. Okay, so uh, now we have uh, everyone I think majority of y'all saying that's ELIP. Huh? Well, actually, Unimas LMS 
our learning management system is running on Moodle platform. Okay, we will we will see why why is it called Moodle platform. Um, now uh, Moodle is an open source learning platform. Okay, basically it's an open source uh, kind of a software. Um, the system that we are using is actually running on Moodle. Okay, uh, that is the name of that particular uh, system. And Elip is the name given by Unimas. <laughs> okay, remember uh, we've actually called it uh, in the beginning. Uh, what's the name? Learning Enhancement Advancement Platform. So that is the uh, the pronoun that actually given by Unimas for the system that we are running. The but the background the the system is actually based on Moodle. Okay, it's an open source, and that's one of the best thing about it. Um, now. We are going to familiarize uh, with this so-called uh, new system, uh, new system that uh, we have upgraded. Previously, we were using uh, what is familiar with, uh, that you can find in the, uh, what is currently in uh, Elip Vault. Uh, it's in already archived. Um, now we have upgraded it and many of y'all have already started using it, uh, especially um, Zunika is very familiar with it, I am sure. Uh, so is uh, Xiaoping, uh, and some of us who have already started using it last last year <clears throat> uh, uh, during uh, our exams uh, in Unimas exam. So, um, what has changed? Huh? That's what we're going to look at it uh, at the moment. Huh? Okay, now um, I, I hope you all can see uh, the the page, huh? Eli page. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this is what uh, the Unimas. Uh, um, Elip, uh, the current, uh, the page that you can actually see for the first time. Uh, um, and uh, what happens is that uh, there are some very subtle changes that they have included. Uh, and that's what we will look into it now. Um, let me first get <coughs> the dashboard. Uh, dashboard. In the old uh, system, uh, you actually look at... Uh, that people are still waiting in the waiting room. Uh, let me admit them first. Huh? Now come back to this. Um, uh, in the old uh, Ely page, this is how it looks like uh, what you were familiar with. Huh? You've got a navigational panel here. And then at the end, you've got the uh, administration part. Once you go into any of the courses, huh? uh, say, for example, um, I will use my own course. Huh? If you go on to your own course, then you'll get the navigation panel on top and then you will have the administration panel down. Okay, now when you go to the new ELIP, um, it's a bit uh, slightly different, slightly different. Um, you will see that I cannot access MDP 10108. Uh, can you notice that? MDP 10108, I cannot access. Yeah. Why, do you, why do you think I cannot access? Why? Why? <laughs> why I cannot? It's why? in the vault. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Huh? Thank you. Uh, you. It's in the vault. Huh? So therefore, only semester two <laughs> courses are offered. So that's <laughs> only. Okay. So um, now uh, I'll show you one of the courses that's going on at the moment. So now here you can see I don't see the the navigation panel and also the administration panel. Nah? I don't see it. But what you can do is that you can actually go to uh, here. Here is where you will find uh, what you call uh, quite close to the uh, administration panel. The administration panel that you used to be very comfortable with. This is the administration panel. Okay. And then um, the triangle here, if you click that, this is very similar, similar to what you have earlier. Okay. The only thing is that in the newer version, sometimes you will actually see uh, Unimas uh, uh, Volt appearing there, that you can actually switch to Unimas Volt. Okay. If you are there, here at the moment, you are in the Volt. So therefore, it is, uh, it's like that. Nah? Sorry, you are in uh, Elip. Nah? So therefore, you only see what is on Elip. Nah? Now, if you go on to say Unimas exam if you click on that 
you can actually jump to elip okay that's the only difference that they have huh? so uh, the, the the triangle near your your icon your your image huh, is quite similar to what you have experienced all this while okay now um Okay, this is the old one. Okay, next, um, if I can look at is uh, okay. This is my Eli page, my Eli page, which is the old version where you can see everything is already available to you there. But the newer one, you you don't see it there. This is just the menu one. This is called uh, what we call a dashboard look. Huh? The dashboard look will only allow you to. Uh, go to certain parts, uh, which therefore you have to navigate it using the administration, which is found on your right hand side. Okay, that's the only subtle uh, differences that you can find from the new and the old one. Huh? Now, if you scroll down and um, and look at uh, say uh, another thing, another thing that I can highlight to you is the way how uh, things that are hidden from your students. Previously, in in uh, in the older one, uh, whatever that is already uh, hidden from the students are deemed. Okay, they are slightly deemed. Uh, therefore, uh, the you know that it is not uh, available to student. Or you can actually uh, go to this one and then switch your role to student and then see which one is available and which one is not available. But in the the latest one. Which is the current elip? This particular message will pop up, saying that this is actually hidden, hidden from the student's view. Okay, that's another uh, difference that you need to uh, be aware which one is hidden. So those things are written like that. It is hidden from the student, so therefore the students will not be able to see it. Okay, so if you want to see now how what the student is actually looking at. Okay, this is what the students will actually look at. Okay, so uh, that's something that I wanted to highlight to y'all. And then the next one is uh, written to my normal. Okay, now it's then editing on. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for interacting. Uh, since City is answering all my questions, very uh, soothing for me because I know that I'm not talking to myself. Ashley, <laughs> <laughs> can I ask a question? Yep. Sure. I'll be more than happy. <laughs> Yeah, for the hidden from the student, is it the whole topic can be hidden or can we choose one or two under the main topic to be hidden? Okay, excellent question. Huh? I so find it, huh? the latest version is somewhat uh, unfriendly in the sense that the older version, you can uh, switch off a lot of things in one go. But in the, the latest one, you need to be very sure which one you want to be uh, switched off. So you have to be very careful what you're switching up. So that means uh, you need to know, uh, let's say, for example, this is the post. Now, this is the one that at the end says that this one is hidden. The Whatever that uh, this, what shall we say? Is it a turquoise color? Uh, some sort of a turquoise color uh, background with a white uh, font. Huh? That particular message says that whatever that's above is hidden. Here, this is hidden. So that's what uh, that's what it mean uh, the hidden. Now, if you want to unhide them, you have to do manually here. But if you were to do it in this part, sorry, do it from this section here. No, let me go to the topic. Huh? Topic will be better to show you what's the difference. Okay, here, this is topic one. Huh? So if I want to hide this whole thing, huh? then everything will be hidden. The whole thing will be hidden. 
but if I want within this topic, I only want to hide this one, then I have to hide that particular part. Earlier on, the earlier version, this thing will not appear, but this whole uh, thing will be deemed. So it'll be like a very deemly, uh, the font will look very dim. So you will know that it is uh, um, hidden from the student's view. But currently, um, it is kind of deemed, but then you are given another uh, message saying that that is actually hidden from the students. Okay, I hope I've answered that question, uh, Pinpan. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, excellent. Um, any question about the navigation panel and all that? Uh, in that, we will come back to that again uh, later. Uh, I will also highlight to you some of the little things that I want to especially to the block coordinators huh, to tell where are the important things that, uh, that you might want to do later. Um, and uh, apart from that, again, uh, just to highlight again, Moodle is an open source learning platform and we are running on Moodle. Huh? The whole LMS is running on Moodle system. Now, um, I would like to have a next uh, interaction. Okay, can you please go back to Mentimeter? Already? Then. Yep, wait, uh, hold on now. Uh, I, will, I will switch on to the next. Uh, okay. What, what is this Mentimeter? Sorry. Okay, um, okay let me uh, just brief. Uh, how, how do you do it? Uh? Uh, I will get this. Okay, can you see the Mentimeter now? Siti, can you yeah. see? Okay, for everyone, uh, Mentimeter is just basically is a, a free uh, kind of uh, online-based uh, software interaction with students or interaction with participants. Uh. Uh, basically, um, you create presentations. Okay, uh, you create presentations, but it has got a limitation. Uh, it limitation each presentation you can only have three files three files huh? so what happens is that uh, you need to be creative huh? how you want to uh, use this uh, free uh, free uh, service huh? uh, but you can upgrade huh? uh, you can upgrade it then once you upgrade you have uh, all kind of other uh, things available the basic one uh, I seem uh, it seems for me uh, the basic one is already good enough huh? so um, today's uh, this one is I, I call it bite site 2021 so I've prepared two uh, uh, folders, uh, to, I, I call it two folders, or here they, they call this as presentation. So this is my first presentation. Under this first presentation, uh, what you need to do is, um, once you come to this particular, this one, this was the first one that I gave you, the task that I gave you, the first one. Uh, I know what is a learning management system. So here, ah, here is the question. Here is the question that you make. Here you can actually select, uh, which uh, what kind of question that you want to actually post? Let's see. I start from beginning. Uh, maybe I create one uh, now. Uh, testing. So is this something like Elite but a free one? It's a web-based uh, interaction, student interaction. You can do it I, I, using web base. You need to go and sign up to Mentimeter first. So now here, this is how it will look like. Huh? The first one, the first one, empty one. This is the first slide. Okay, the first slide. I'll say I do a multiple choice question. Then you type the question. Uh, I love Mentimeter. <laughs> okay. Then you say uh, yes, no. Okay. Uh, then you, you want to have a different choice of uh, activities, you can actually do. There are lots of activities, different, different activities that you can actually do. Okay, So you select which uh, type of uh, questions that you want to post your, uh, to your um, participants. Okay, Is it clear now? Any question? Can you, um, the web address, if you paste it into your slide will it be active uh, or you have to go out of your presentation every time to go to the web page to log into mentimeter 
okay i have learned uh, something that uh, what that that is the reason why whenever i show you the interaction here i gave mm. you the code i gave you the code directly yeah so the students can actually uh, go to this web page uh, the mentimeter interaction page is separate from your page and what you were looking at earlier so mm. this one you know once they go into this uh, page they just punch in this number and they okay. will start answering the question <clears throat> but another thing that you need to remember is um you need to but your like your in red now your menti menti.com is not clickable it's not clickable because i'm presenting is uh, presenting it already so i okay. love mentimeter look at the number it has changed i've yes. created a new presentation the number has changed yeah. so if you want to interact with this particular page you need to punch in this number and mm -hmm. then you as the instructor or the person who has actually made the the page need to present it the present uh, icon is here so you need to press the present uh, present and then only this page will be available for the whoever comes to the menti.com okay with this access code to interact mm is it is it uh, clear okay uh, it's, it's it's clear okay it's okay. just a bit inconvenient <laughs> yeah. what, which which part is the inconvenient one for the one listen actually for both because okay. you have to present and for the one who's listening because you have to go out of the presentation go to your web page log into mentimeter and put in the number okay this is what so it's uh, much it would be much nicer if you have something which is clickable okay uh the the thing is that uh when when you want to uh, when okay when i do this with my students i mm. i need to prepare myself uh can uh, okay you can't see my bottom part huh? so i will i'll make sure that uh the the software that is running is useful for that particular lecture slot so i will have all of them prepared i will have a web page already with mentimeter i'll have my powerpoint there and i have my ocp which is the online communication platform either zoom webex or teams available so these are the three things i'll be operating so i will toggle only with those three things you can you can actually pull this down and and actually you can then uh, see what what you actually want to do uh you can take that off and then you can switch this uh now now you can actually see which are the things that are running mm yeah okay then then you can switch uh without uh, doing anything uh, further okay i hope that will be useful mm okay um any other question regarding mentimeter okay um, let's go back to the question can i ask is there any link from the mentimeter that you can copy and paste put at the chat group so when we want to answer the question we just press the link from the chat group and go to the questions is there any function i'm, like I'm sure they have they have but i've never done it uh, before i'm sure you have mm -hmm. to explore this uh i yeah, you are you are very true i think def definitely uh, i've never actually copied this let's say for example uh, if i'm doing this now at the moment and uh, and i'm going to my presentation and i'm clicking on this this is the question that i ask you all uh, i'm familiar with unimas blended learning checklist uh, this is the interaction that i asked you all to do uh, recently um and ah uh, yeah there you go you have that share yeah this is the magic button uh, that you can actually click click uh, a clickable uh, this yep there you go so then you sharing the result not the the no no, no, no. you you the the voting link uh, and all that and then this is where okay. this is where they will click and then they will join okay the voting access okay participation then the presentation sharing is different presentation okay. sharing is here okay that answers your question uh, pinfan yes yes okay. thank you okay okay excellent whenever you see this icon then you are, you can do whatever that you just asked in any of the softwares 
okay um this is the result na uh, for what what the outcome uh, uh, 17 18 19 21 Uh, there's only 21 people uh, every time uh, it's 27 of y'all around okay this is the result uh, um, uh, and i'm familiar with unimas blended learning checklist uh, three said no 11 said yes the majority of the people have said that i mean most probably all of these people are block coordinators and uh, they they have already seen this uh, previously i've already uh, sent this uh, checklist to most of them not sure uh, never heard oh one of them have never heard of this Uh, this will be i hope this will be an enlightening uh, moment for the person who have never heard of this blended learning checklist huh? um okay uh, let's take this okay this is uh, i will be sending everybody yeah, who have registered uh, i'll be sending the checklist to everyone later after this presentation is finished i will send you the latest uh, 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 checklist huh? now uh, please disregard the overview one huh? the overview was actually written uh, two days uh, two years ago Uh, when we were still doing uh, face to face huh? so it just basically says that the blended learning is uh, something that is uh, besides your face to face huh? so it's a mixture of face to face and online learning activities now currently we are doing remote learning so therefore is 100% uh, uh, it's online learning activities that we are actually engaging with huh? so therefore i'm i'm sure this one we will uh, change this uh, very soon huh? come will actually change this uh, very soon um this is the introduction part uh, of the uh, checklist um now um this are quite important one um okay uh, i think later you can actually read this basically the the a the one in red it says course information uh, course information now uh, the course information uh, it says um this blended learning checklist have got four sections very important i uh, remember the four sections now the the section number 1 is just basically the administration part uh, or what we call uh, regarding information pertaining to the course so in here all you need to do is provide either the course learning outcome or any course schedule that you have prepared for the course and put it into the elip system okay and i've written here uh, in one item under this category yeah, of uh, a you only need to provide one item move on to the next one uh, which is the b yeah, content and resources okay under the content and resources you need to put in minimum seven items minimum uh, minimum seven items the items can be in whatever form uh, it can be a powerpoint uh, file a pdf file a word file or you can actually record uh, in the sense that any of this kind of uh, recorded materials any video clips and then it can be also a journal article in the form of a pdf file uh, web pages that you have uh, made it into a pdf file ebooks that you given audio books okay and then multimedia files here goes uh, video clips again uh, diagrams charts that you actually posted for the students uh, information so these are all uh, resources and huh? these are considered resources um, and you can also link uh, pages from other lms huh? other lms uh, schoology edmodo and open learning these are these are different types of lms where you can actually import things from them um, so these are basically content and resources you need to provide seven minimum seven items now to be honest with you b is the most easiest thing to do if somebody offering um, uh, a course on elip and they fail to do this that shows that they are not interested in doing e learning uh, because this is the most easiest uh, component to uh, fulfill and also this this one the a part is also very easy to fulfill so 1 and 7 Yes. Uh, anyone? Uh, somebody wanted to tell something. Yeah, actually. Yes. So the P seven items. Can we just have seven PowerPoint slide and it's already fulfilled? Fulfilled. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. You right. can put seven PowerPoint file or seven PDF or seven Word file. That's good enough. But I'm sure, Siti, <clears throat> you will have many. Yeah, I'll show yeah. you later. I'll show you later how many I uh, used to have per semester. You know, uh, a general average. Uh, 
I'm sure the rest of the block one industries will know this is the the most items that you actually put in. Yeah. Okay. Then come to the third part, huh, which is the activities. Huh? Activities. Now this one is slightly different. You need to pay attention on this. Uh, you, although you need to only provide three items of any of these, okay, three items. But there's a catch. The items you can provide, but if there is no participation from students, therefore it is not of use to you, okay, to get blended learning status. You can provide the items, but if students are not interacting, therefore you will not be able to get the blended learning status. Please bear in mind. Eh? For item one and uh, item A and item B, eh? this these items, sorry, this uh, part, eh? you the uh, the system doesn't actually look at participation. Okay, you've already provided it as a static on your on your on your page on your ELI page. So therefore, the requirement is fulfilled. Okay, and then for this one, I will teach you a trick afterward. Eh? How to actually capture so that the system knows that somebody is actually engaged on that file. When you when you post the file onto ELIP, always uh, go to the setting and select um, force download. Do you do you understand what I'm telling? So the student has to download the material. Yes, that's right. Okay. Whenever they click the file, it will be forced to download. Okay. okay. If you if you let them just click and observe it on the same page, a pop up page, uh, then mm -hmm. uh, the the system might not capture it. Okay. When when you ask the student to download it, then then the logbook will actually register there's an activity going on. Okay. Oh, so that then. So what that means we can use. Can we uh, can we capture that? Yes, you can capture that. Okay, oh. but but uh, like I said, for uh, section A and section B, the participation is not counted. But you can make the students to uh, uh, force download. Okay. Oh no, I'm just thinking maybe that's one way of uh, monitoring attendance, lah. Maybe you can. Mm, but yeah. but uh, the hindsight is uh, the hindsight is uh, sometimes students when when they click on this uh, these files and they look at the first page and they look the same thing like what they have note from their seniors and all that they might think uh, that, oh this is uh, something uh, the same one that I have I no need to download lah. I'll just stick with what I have you know so that's why you need to update update your first page or at least your first page or whatever that you do is updated the names need to be uh, different or whatever then the students when they want to click on it it is an updated version so they will actually be happy to download it right mm -hmm. yeah. the other question i have let's say there's a lecture and i click on the lecture so it will download then i use another it, laptop uh, and prof, look at the same prof it will only download if you go to the settings and tell it to force download when you click it's forced download uh, no as a student uh, as a student as a student when you click it once you as an instructor put it as forced download yes. then the student click on it then it will download automatically okay so the next time the student logs into the system and clicks on the same thing it will still download so one student two downloads uh but but what will happen is that interaction the thing will count the number of percentage of a student per complement of the class. Not the same student goes and 100 times download, it'll be still one student. Ah, oh, okay. That's what I wanted to uh -huh. know. Okay. I, I will address that in the quality part, huh? later quality part. That's a very good question. Uh, where, when you come back to that, to see the quality of your resources that you're providing and how many people have actually interacted with you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, come to uh, ah, yeah. Can I ask you something about the no next session, the forum? You okay. said here the participation is counted. Yes, participation is important. Um okay. So let's say I open up a forum for discussion, but only 10 out of 100 students participate. Is it counted or is it not Very counted? Good. 10, you will get one star. I will address the quality later regarding when we okay. talk about the star. Okay, you can. But here, the, the thing is that uh, the, the key thing is 
you need to provide minimum of three items, three items of any mm -hmm. of these, and then uh, make sure that your students actually participate. That's the key thing. Huh? They must participate. If they don't participate, mm -hmm. then it will not be counted. Now, my personal uh, sharing uh, uh, and the most easiest thing to do uh, is this particular activity, choice. The choice activity is really catered for a spon uh, very uh, prompt response from student uh, online. That means you're having your class, uh, let's say now you're having a class. I can just tell the students, can you go to Ely page now? and please uh, do the choice activity in week three. So they will go there and they will do it then there. And then I will also get the response. At the same time, I will also fulfill the participation and I will get most of the time, very high number of participation. Can you follow me? Everybody is silent. Yes. Yes, 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 can yes, follow. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I would advise, uh, please use choice more, uh, at least three times a month, you will fulfill. If you want to go on doing other things, other interesting things, uh, I will let you know afterward uh, what are the things that are available in the current uh, ELIP, uh, current ELIP. Now, the last one, uh, D. Here in D, uh, you need two items only. Okay, two items. Um, I've done all three of them, uh, different parts, but uh, most of the time it's an assignment. You give an assignment that's good enough. Okay, you will get a number of uh, students participating uh, for assignment. And then quiz. If you have a small quiz, it can be a formative assessment. That's good enough. And the students can participate and you already fulfill. So very simple. So the magic number, one, seven, three, two. Okay. Now, Actually, the quiz in ELIP has to be an ELIP quiz. Yes, it's based on ELIP. Page. Not oh, okay. So let's say I have a link to quizzes. Dr. Gabriel, you can do that. That is excellent question. You can have a third party uh, quiz platform embedded into the ELIP. You give the, uh, the names, uh, you need to give the link and everything in there. You yes. can say that you have done that. Okay, but will the system count it? Yes, it will count it. Okay. If at the end of the day, you have evidence showing that your students have actually done it and you didn't get your blended learning status, you can actually tell me. I will then inform the, comp the, the person who is actually auditing the, the course. Well, then uh, they, they are human. Sometimes they miss out. So hmm. we will point it out to them. That's why this checklist is for your own personal use. You have done all this and you have counted and you have seen your students participating in it. So therefore you fulfill. It's very hmm. transparent, very easy to fulfill. So therefore uh, you can get the status very uh, easily. Okay. Ashley. Okay. Yes. Nanti you share this checklist because I don't have this. I have been sending this checklist to everybody <laughs> Every semester. Okay. Everybody to body supper. <laughs> to medical Lock coordinator. Medical academic group. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I will definitely do this time. Huh? This time I will do it for all the registered participants and I'll also resend it in the medical academic uh, group. Okay. 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 Thanks for highlighting that, uh, Aliza. Okay, uh, next interaction. Huh? After this, huh, we'll take a break. Y'all can go and take your uh, food from downstairs. Huh? This is the, the next uh, interaction. Huh? Okay, please uh, do that. Um, let me go in on that. Okay. Wait, huh? wait. Uh, I have not uh, changed the slide yet. For those of y'all who just joined in, uh, this this particular interaction number four is um, is via uh, Mentimeter. Uh, so basically, what you need to do is that log in to this particular page menti.com, or you can just Google Mentimeter join a presentation. Then it'll take you to the page, and all you need to do is that punch in this code seven three two three six zero four eight, and then it will let you uh, attempt an interaction. Uh, but it's going to be very tough because this, this is actually a knowledge from what we have already presented uh, earlier. 
but you can still uh, do it. Uh, I'm going to start now. Uh, I think uh, we waited some time already. Uh, this is the last part of the checklist. Huh? Uh, what we did earlier was uh, we had um, uh, uh, we showed A, B, C, and uh, D. Okay, and we did the interaction. Now, just to sum up uh, or summarize uh, what we have actually covered, <clears throat> uh, the answer to the earlier one, uh, how many content or resources do I have to provide on eLeap course? Uh, it's seven. Uh, seven is the, the answer. Um, I think uh, everybody actually uh, did seven. Uh, only one person uh, did uh, three. Uh, I guess that three probably uh, they, they came in uh, recently. That's why they missed out probably. But uh, it's quite clear this is the criteria from the checklist, the, the blended learning checklist. Uh, part A, you need only one uh, item. Uh, part B, you need to provide seven uh, resources. Uh, part C, you need three uh, resources or three item activities. Huh? And then uh, the part D, you need two assessments. So this is the number 1732. Now, uh, next section, uh, we're going to uh, section four now. Uh, blended learning status, uh, SEM 1, uh, last semester, uh, what we have actually obtained uh, as a faculty. Uh, the number of courses that we have actually offered uh, last semester was 70, 70 courses. Uh, a chunk of it is from the undergraduate. It's about approximately 57% was from undergraduate. And then the remaining was uh, postgraduate courses. Now, out of the 70 uh, number of uh, courses offered, uh, only 41 achieved uh, blended learning. Okay, only 41 achieved blended learning. Uh, and these 41, uh, majority of them were from the undergraduate courses. Okay, three quarter, nearly three quarter of them were from the undergraduate. And then the remaining was from the postgraduate. Maybe uh, that's the thing that I'm going to highlight later. Overall, uh, overall, this is what we have achieved. 60% uh, 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 blended learning. Uh, learning uh, status uh, that we have achieved, uh, blended learning practitioners, uh, uh, we have achieved 60% only uh, last semester. Now, <clears throat> analyzing the result uh, of that uh, blended learning uh, for mm -hmm. SEM 1, uh, this is, I've created a table, and uh, the table shows the number of courses that attain blended learning. Uh, what I've done is that I've categorized them into three uh, category, uh, uh, three different categories. Uh, First one is BL, yes. That means they have achieved blended learning. Uh, missed BL. I call it BL miss. Uh, it's because you will realize later, only because of one particular uh, item, uh, they have actually missed the status of blended learning. Okay. And then uh, there's also the category of BL, no. That means outrightly, uh, they are very far behind and uh, a lots of room for improvement uh, before they can actually achieve uh, BL status. So these are the numbers that we are uh, more interested in, uh, how we can actually help these uh, courses to achieve uh, blended learning. So based on that, just to uh, remind everybody, uh, the blended learning checklist says that this is the requirement Items required, uh, 1732. Okay. One from course information, seven from content and resources, three activities, and two assessment. This is what you need to provide. The, another catch is that participation is very crucial when it comes to activities and assessment. You just can't just provide the activities and assessment without any participation. Okay. And the participation is important. Now, <clears throat> looking at the missed. Uh, blended learning, uh, the courses that just missed. Uh, I've analyzed all the nine courses, uh, and this is what the outcome is. Uh, all nine courses failed to reach blended learning status due to lack of only one more activity. Okay, one more activity uh, from the C. Uh, so basically, they only provided two activity. C part, you need to provide three activity. In the first place itself, they only provided two activity or the other activity which is provided, no participation. Okay, 
so it's a, just a missed uh, missed opportunity no means they would have uh, uh, these nine courses would have got the blended learning status <clears throat> so these are the missed uh, courses the next one uh, this is the interesting part uh, um but, actually yes yes uh, may i know how how many percent of the participation that need is it full participation or at least 50% or what not okay participation uh, i will address later i i've got a slide just to show you uh, the participation will determine your star uh, i will talk to talk about the the star when i come to that part uh, is it okay is it okay Hello? okay uh, okay uh, okay yeah uh, ah. it's it's a good question uh, the participation is crucial at the moment one participation you already get the blended learning status okay but i will i will address how many that you need to get what are the the little things that you can do ensure to get three stars okay okay <clears throat> let's move on uh, this is uh, now no blended uh, learning status huh? this is the courses huh? about 20 courses huh? all together out of the 70 courses that we offered last semester 20 of them they are uh, the room for improvement is uh, very much uh, there a lot of room for improvement is there now out of this uh, <clears throat> uh, 20 courses seven came from the undergraduate courses huh? seven of them seven courses now these seven courses they only provided one uh, three of them only provided one uh, activity okay remember activity you need to provide three minimum three they only provided one three of the courses huh? and then the remaining uh, uh, three other courses tada activity langsung no activity at all and then one of the courses fulfill a b and c but the d part no assessment at all okay no assessment at all that why they were under the category of no uh, blended learning status huh? i just categorized them as no blended learning status so there are a lot of room for improvement uh, in the sense. Now, the, similarly, when I looked at the postgraduate uh, courses, uh, all 13 of them, uh, when you look at their uh, A, B, C, D requirement, uh, uh, majority of them are C and D are the ones that are missing. Uh. So when I say N means there's no, no item at all that is supporting the activities. There's none, uh, no activities for this particular course. Uh. Then when it comes to, uh, there's, if, if there's a number there given, only that number has been given, okay, recorded. That means, let's say course number three here, only provided under activities, one activity only, missing two more in order for them to fulfill. So that's the analysis that we've shown. So bottom line, what, what it basically shows is that uh, C and D are the one that, that is stopping uh, many of these courses from achieving blended learning status. And C and uh, D are not very difficult. You know, not very difficult, but very easily can be achieved. Okay, I will share with you all how we can actually go about doing it uh, uh, to, to achieve uh, C and D. I did not want to put the course code and all that, uh, no need to name them on that, but then once they will know, but I think uh, if we want to be really proactive, I think each of these uh, uh, the posting or the course coordinators need to be emailed uh, personally and then tell them that this is what the analysis look like and don't do this uh, in the future. Because uh, it's very, um, especially this one, uh, I, I feel very sayang, you know, only one activity, you know, you only need one more activity to achieve for the blended learning status. Okay, and they missed out that. Any question regarding this analysis? Okay, thank you. Let's no. move on. Ah, okay, thank you. Now, uh, come to that question. I think many people have asked this. Huh? Even uh, Chua earlier asked, and then uh, Ijod also now asked the same thing. Now here, <clears throat> this is the the star that you actually uh, achieve huh? once you get the blended learning indicator lighting up in your course page. Okay. Now, um, a minimum of one star is required for BL status. Okay, one star is good enough already. Yeah? Now here is what it shows. Huh? This is the number that is required, 732. Okay, one is uh, for section A. Yeah? Section A, you only need one, uh, which is I think mostly everybody uh, fulfills it. Huh? Even some courses don't even do the number one. Huh? 
so that is very bad um and the green here shows you how much you have actually provided in your course okay how much you have actually provided how much interaction the uh, students have actually done so this will light up as green so to measure the quality of your bl practices by gauging at the activity participation of your students in the activities that you have created so that's the whole the the, the star indicates huh? now a minimum of one participation for each activity and three submissions for each assessment that's what it means by one star so you get one student participating fulfilling the three uh, activities that you have already given that's good enough huh? that 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 you already fulfill that criteria okay one participation now 30% of the students okay in our case uh, about out of that 150 students uh, uh, 30% okay if you get 30% of the students uh, fulfilling that that's good enough ready 50 students participating you get two stars if you get more than 50% more than 75 huh? 75% uh, students participate you will get a three star okay so that's that's the meaning of the uh, the the stars that appears on your page okay um does that answer the question uh chua earlier you asked and ijut okay okay yes okay thank you thank you very much now next interaction uh, you can please log on to mentimeter again um either the menti.com or menti join the presentation uh the same thing as uh, 7323604 the same uh this one and now i'm going to show the next for those of y'all who just joined uh uh, uh recently um and okay now the question is participation of students are crucial <clears throat> for bl status I'm sharing the mentimeter results on huh, that they are showing on huh, now. Um I think most of y'all know the answer already so I, I'm glad to actually share it. So this is a real time huh? uh, people are actually uh, uh putting it that you can actually see the answer. Um but when you do it with your students you would not want to reveal the answer first maybe give them 5 minutes everybody must do it and then after that then you pop in your your graph to show what was the outcome. Huh? So you will get a varied answers and then then you can start discussing uh how uh how the response if it is a very crucial uh piece of information that you want your students to take home uh therefore you can actually put it in this way and then see the outcome and then discuss that uh online so that's mentimeter is very good for that similarly you can do this uh using the choice choice activity in your eli okay okay let's move on um uh, now we come to the last part then huh? the last part which is the engaging students meaningfully yeah? now um this is uh, uh things that i've gathered huh, from uh this past uh, one and a half year we are doing this uh, with the students so one of the platforms that i like to use is whatsapp huh? whatsapp a lot of things that i use uh, do with whatsapp and i use elip uh, and most of the time i do flip uh, classroom huh? so uh, i find that uh communication is very important whether you do synchronous or even asynchronous uh communication is very important so i will address this part and i share with you one thing that i've done uh and uh, you all can give a comment uh, or if you all have done the same thing then you all can uh, tell that huh? and then we'll move on to elip huh? uh, regarding add an activity and resources what have changed what has changed huh, in the latest uh, platform and the latest uh, version of elip huh? what has changed and then uh, we will address something on instructional design uh, e learning materials uh, i'll give my course as an example and then lastly elip uh, how to enroll participants uh, this is very useful for <clears throat> block coordinators uh. i know <coughs> dr miat uh, sent an email uh, earlier this morning i read that email so she is very aware of how to do this uh, we'll also teach the rest of them so that you can actually do it uh, on your own previously this part here uh you need to call uh, to come and ask them to allow you to uh, put in the teachers uh, but now uh, the power is uh, being your uh, the block coordinator is empowered to do this huh? okay the first one regarding communication huh? this is the scenario 
okay, this is a scenario. After you read this, and then you can tell me what is your perspective of this. Have you come across this, or have you uh, um, have you come across this uh, problem scenario? While you, as an instructor, busy writing or composing your messages in WhatsApp, you have sent the first composed message, and then later you add in further. Okay, while while you are doing this, some of your enthusiastic students suddenly interrupt the flow of your message. They start asking and responding to your posting. Have you had this experience? Mm, no. No. Okay. I've had uh, many times. Some probably uh, I've, I I use uh, WhatsApp. Uh, when I post a message, then immediately uh, some of the students who are already online they start replying uh, to that. Ne? So um, there are two ways to uh, to actually solve this problem. Uh, if you are, if you have encountered it, ne? if you didn't encounter it, then then you bear with me lah. Uh, maybe in the future you might or might not uh, actually encounter this. Ne? Now <clears throat> um, tagging uh, tagging is very useful. Uh, tag whatever that you're talking. You need to tag it. Unless your message actually clearly carries a very important uh, word or whatever that describes the conversation. Now, what I use is that I I create um, the first session that I have with them online. I'll tell them that there are some etiquettes, huh? the etiquettes that they have to follow. Uh, therefore, they have to have uh, when I conduct a particular class uh, on even on WhatsApp or even on online, um, you need to follow certain etiquettes. Huh? So. One of these etiquette is that whenever I put a start button, do not post anything. Do not come in to interject me or to write anything until wait until I finish my post and then I put a stop button. And then once the stop button engaged is there, then you can actually start posing whatever question relevant to the post that I've actually done. Because in the past, what will happen is that you're writing something immediately, then somebody will actually add on certain things or asking questions. Huh? You will be you'll be either uh, uh, you want to answer the question or you want to continue writing your thing. Uh, so you'll, you'll be in a two uh, way of doing what, what you want to do. No? So <clears throat> this way, it helps you. Huh? So this is an example of what I've actually done huh, on the WhatsApp platform itself. Huh? So I put the start button, then I start writing. What the, this was for my last week's topic, huh? the topic number two that we have discovered. So this was the plan that I put the label and then I've highlighted this is what uh, I've done in Elip. So please go and have a look at it. And then once I've done that, at the end of that, any query is most welcome. Then I put stop. Then the questions will start pouring, whatever that they want to ask and all that. So in a way, it helps you to construct your posting uh, very well. So this is something that I address in every uh, first lesson, uh, etiquette. Uh, etiquette of communication, etiquette of online learning. So tagging here is important so that you can actually uh, easily come back to it if you want to look at it out. In this case, it's easy for me, the summary of topic two, that was a tag. Okay. So I can search for it uh, easy. So every time I do uh, one particular topic, I put a summary of what I'm doing. So it helps the student to know. Now, that is one way of doing it. There's another way of doing it. Uh, this is a bit more... Um, I don't know how I'll, I'll let you judge and this is more uh, I won't tell you my decision or so let let you guys see uh, whether you you like it or not huh? now in your whatsapp in your whatsapp you can actually create two groups of the same uh, group but two uh, uh, two what do you call it? two group chats lah. basically two group chats huh? So now I have a, a group chat, huh? a mirror group chat called Ashley MDU1023. I put that cards. Huh? Now under these cards, huh? all you have to do is that go and click on the settings for that, the dummy one, huh? the dummy uh, group. Now under that, that you, you come to the group settings. Now you click the group settings. Under group settings, you will get this particular message, huh? dialog box. Huh? Send messages and edit group info. Both these the default is all participants are able to change, add messages and also change whatever that they want to change in the group information. They can change. All participants can do it. You can change this <coughs> to only admins. Now, the admin is you. You are the admin. 
So therefore, only you can send messages and you can edit the group info. Okay. Now, once you change that, this is what will happen. Now, the setting of this uh, second uh, uh, group, or you, you want it to call it a primary uh, chat group, you can do it. Uh, now, in here, the students passively only listens to your or, or reads your messages. They cannot interact. Okay. You can have another chat group for them to actually write there what are the questions that they want to post and all that. Now, uh, this is the two way of doing it uh, to solve the so-called uh, problem scenario. Uh, um, has anyone encountered this or anyone has any comment on this? I open for comments, please. Um, actually, I don't have this on my phone. What, uh, what phone are you using? Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Um, even Android phones, uh, the same thing is there. I checked on my daughter's one and uh, that you just uh -huh. go to settings and then you go to the group setting. Yeah, you can see that in Android. Uh, you can you can have it in Android also, the same thing. Group, you can change group info. this. Is it group info? Uh, group info. Uh, yeah, group info and the send messages. Who can send messages? Uh -huh. You can change that from all participants to only admins. <coughs> okay, you can test it out in, in any of your group now if you are the admin. Nah? Uh, mm. So that, that's how uh, you can actually change it. Even in Android, the same thing. Uh, this this one is actually on uh, iPhone. Eh? Any comment? So this is something uh, you can establish an etiquette uh, while communicating with your students uh, using WhatsApp. Uh, if you're doing a lot of uh, communication with your students uh, via WhatsApp. Eh? And then this helps uh, for the student also because everything will be organized and uh, therefore they can actually set. You can also tell them uh, what you're doing, your tagging and all that. So they, they will know what are the things that they can look for later on, messages that are <coughs> more clear. So when, when they see uh, later, when I, mean, I ask my students, when they see this green button and uh, red button, they'll all stop doing whatever that they're doing in the group. And then they let me finish everything and then only they will start interacting with me. Okay, so I hope that is being useful. Eh? So that's one thing. And then the next one, uh, next one is about. Uh, remember, we asked uh, the the three star, one star, or two star quality of our execution. Eh? Quality of our execution. Uh, there are plenty of uh, e-learning gurus out there who are teaching you new tricks and new techniques and new uh, platforms that you can actually engage to do and all that. I think boils down at the end of the day is the course design. The course design. I've, I've, I've had the luxury of looking at many of our courses in, in, our, in our group, huh? and mostly in uh, phase one and also some in uh, phase two. Huh? And uh, when I have access to their course and I look at them, uh, sometimes it's very alarming to see a one hour lecture uh, being uh, recorded and posted uh, onto the web page. Huh? And uh, and when you look at it, um, you you would you would want to try to put yourself in your student's shoe, and uh, how will they actually experience looking through the the one hour lecture? You will find that the course design in online learning is completely different than face to face teaching. A one hour teaching on face to face and uh, doesn't equate or doesn't equal to an online uh, learning. So uh, I will just share with you some of my opinion uh, it's just my uh, uh, opinion uh, feel free to comment if you have any uh, and we will actually share from this and we'll take away whatever the best practices is huh? um, and also the learning resources huh? what are the learning resources how do the how do you help your student to actually achieve uh, whatever that they, they want to achieve huh? and then especially the learning activities what are you actually going to give them huh? so these are the things three things that i would like to cover the course design, learning resources, learning activities. And also, overall, it's all about the instructional design. Instructional design in uh, online e-learning uh, is important. Okay. Now, uh, there are a lot of models out there. Uh, one of the things that uh, our guru, uh, uh, Dr. Karim, uh, who is a very active uh, e-learning practitioner, uh, he has started this just even before this pandemic uh, started. Huh? So he's very well known uh, when it comes to this, and he always advocates this uh, Salmon's uh, uh, five-stage model. Eh? 
So it's quite simple of uh, how access you need to know whether how your students are accessed and how motivated they are. Online socialization is also important. So interaction is very important. You don't want to just give them uh, if you're doing a synchronous, you don't want to have a one hour just one way talking. Uh, you want to interact with them. OK, information exchange is very important. So doing a simple survey is very important for you to share your uh, resources or whatever knowledge that you have. And then knowledge construction, you have to build in knowledge construction. You don't need to complete every single thing that you say face-to-face uh, -face lecture that you need to transfer it into online. You don't have to. You can give them reading materials. You can ask them to go and do that. And you can give them some tasks, see whether they have achieved that task. Okay, And then last, uh, and to development, uh, this is basically supporting. Uh, how do you actually support them later if they have any queries or anything that you want to do it? So this is a very, um, very concise uh, five stage model. Uh, um, the focus is never on the content development, uh, never. It's all on the design. What do you design? How do you design it? How do you help the student to achieve it? That's more important than to actually the content development. The content development, you can give them the textbook and ask them to go and read this page to this page. Okay. Uh, but how do you achieve whatever that you have the uh, learning outcome that you, have, you want to achieve? That's more in the design of your online learning. I will share with you later uh, some of the pages that, uh, that I've developed. Huh? And uh, this 70, uh, 2010 is uh, just a, a number that a guideline huh, for you. Uh, activities, there should be a lot of activities when you go online. Uh, synchronous especially and then there should be a closure closure is basically a summary yeah? summary of what uh, what you've done and so on and then you can also ask the student to reflect okay your some of your activities can also uh, go into reflection okay you can give them a reflection of asking and that can also be an uh, activity bite size very important bite size one hour lecture i i, I myself uh Sometimes I see uh, when I go into uh, some of these web pages uh, and see that the content of it, uh, there are a lot of uh, video clips are there, but you do not know what uh, what is the size of the video clip, uh, how long will it take and all that. And very important that now they highlight the students learning as SLT, self-learning time and all those things, or as we call it self-directed learning and all those things. That self-learning time, uh, it will be helpful later I will emphasize uh, this later on when I show you the online. How do you guide the students uh, with how long will this take? How long will this file take? Uh, you can achieve. When they see a string of um, uh, video clips uh, to go through, they will be alarmed. They will be overwhelmed. They say, oh my God, I've got I have seven or 10 more uh, files to go through. But you actually see it's only a 30 minute. The 10 clips is only 30 minutes. Each one of them will only take three minutes three minutes to view and you digest whatever that you're actually looking in. It might be packed with information, but then that will be addressed in that clip itself. Okay. So how the student goes. So these are uh, micro learning is very important. How do you address? Okay. This is again a guideline uh, filled with activities and also the actual lecture. The actual lecture is only 30 minutes, uh, whereas the activities actually cover more. I'm going to highlight this later. We'll go online and then I'll show you exactly what is this. Huh? Um, this is the current, um, the present uh, platform huh, on eLib where it will allow you. These are the activities that are um, provided huh, for you to uh, engage the students. Some of it are new. I, I myself have not even tried uh, some of them. Huh? And like these are the ones that are familiar to me. These are the ones that I've done before. The rest I have not actually uh, attempted, uh, but that gives me an option. Uh, maybe I should try one, maybe uh, one or two in one semester and see whether I can actually. I'm very much interested in crossword. I actually do a third party uh, crossword and then I import the crossword puzzle into the uh, as a PDF file and give to my students. But since now uh, they can do a crossword within the ELIP, it's very interesting. Huh? This thing is all part of the gamification gamification of learning. Uh, this has been in, included. So maybe if you want to explore, this is uh, found uh, under the uh, edit uh, add tech, uh, activity and so on. You can choose 
this uh, gamification uh, activities. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so that's about that. And next one is the resources. Huh? These are the resources that's given. Again, once again, uh, these are the ones that I have done before. These are the ones that I've done. The rest, I've not uh, done. Uh, Google Meet for Moodle. Uh, I've never uh, done this. I've, I didn't even know that it exists. So it's something for you to explore. Maybe uh, we can see what you can do. So you don't need to go far. Elip itself has got lots of uh, different versions of uh, interaction with students available. So you can actually explore those, those things. And then the recommended ones. These are the recommended ones. And uh, this is what I have done before, the one in circled. And the one that's not circled, I've not done that before. And these are kind of new uh, group uh, self-reflection, uh, self-selection. Uh, I don't even know what it is, self-selection. I thought it was reflection in the first place. Um, so these are the things that you can actually do. And then there's also something called attendance. Uh, attendance, uh, and maybe we, we might want to explore this. Uh, uh, attendance and see what where it can help us to actually do uh, actual attendance for our classroom activity. Yeah? So this this is what uh, we have done so far. But before we do the interaction, I, I just want to go online and show you this. This is a topic two uh, that I've recently done with my students for the course that I'm I'm currently teaching. Eh? Currently teaching. <clears throat> what I've done is that. I started the course uh, by giving them a brief overview, uh, overview of what I'm uh, putting in. Because when, when you start doing this, uh, if you go scroll through, even I myself, if I'm a student, I will be scared. Oh my God, under one topic, there's, there's 10 clips, 10 clips. But basically this will calm them down. Basically, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, it will calm them down. Uh, I've actually written every single thing, a uh, very short clip. These are all short clips, short video clips. And then I've even put the time. How much time does it require for you to actually view this clip? Okay. You can look at it. There's, these two clips show three minutes only. And then these 10 video clips, only 34. Actually, the seven video clips is much more uh, longer uh, to go through. It's 38 minutes. So... All this helps the student to come down when they actually look at it. And then it also gives them a sort of like a guidance huh, to go through one by one. And here I've given them an overview of what is it all about. Uh, from starting with something very easy, uh, explaining in a 2D fashion and then going to a 3D uh, to show them. Then they'll have a better conceptual idea. Then they read the text. Then they will understand this uh, in a clearer way. After doing that, then they have a formative assessment. A formative assessment in the form of a crossword and then uh, there's something interaction using a forum and then finally a short quiz these are all under formative and then comes the summative one in the form of a continuous assessment where they need to do an assignment so this is the flow of things now um, i've also highlighted uh, when you are doing all this something that need to be uh, reminded uh, uh, protein means what are proteins so I've given them some example I would like to highlight to them because it's a central dogma from DNA becomes protein. So what are the proteins? The diversity of uh, proteins uh, highlight that. So I put that as a label to just to make sure that they remember that, that that is the important aspect. And then go on to continuing the other parts of the lectures. So the, the instructional design is very important when it comes to helping the students to uh, learn online. Uh, this is one of the way of doing it. So uh, I'm just sharing this. Um, I'm I'm open to any comments and suggestions from uh, anyone. So Elip allows you to uh, arrange your your um, your resources and activities uh, based on indentation. So all you need to do is just go on here and then start moving left or right. Okay. I hope uh, most of you all will know what to do. Because whenever I go to any of these uh, web pages and look at it, I see everything aligned flushed to the uh, left. Everything would be flushed to left. Okay, so uh, when 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 the students actually view, it's a much more pleasant thing to actually see uh, what they are actually viewing. And then labeling labeling can also be done in a different way. This is actually a label. 
uh, this is a label. You can actually import a, a particular image and then put it in here. So this can be also created. How you create this uh, label, uh, you can use any tools, uh, create the label and then import the tool uh, label to here. Any comment? Actually, this course you're teaching alone, is it? Yeah, yeah, I'm teaching alone. Yeah, I'm just wondering how the okay, module also... coordinator can apply this or transfer this because one module has plenty of. Um, okay, you you can edges. do this uh, in in my particular course, which I share with all of y'all in uh, semester one uh, last mm. year. Uh, ah, you you can the foundation. you can yeah the foundation block you can you can still do all this uh, okay i i've actually helped some of them to actually do that so i pushed whatever indentation that i can prepare i prepared some for this is in the old old uh, platform huh? the old uh, version of uh, elip so you need to give some kind of design so you you sometimes you'll see all this huh? i can't help and this so now if you can list them down and then you you can actually do some kind of thing and when it comes to my part i i'll try to do some kind of introduction to that whatever that i'm giving so maybe i thought maybe somebody will learn from what what they are looking at so you you assist the students by telling what to expect, what to expect, and then what are they supposed to do? Help them out in telling them these are the things that you want to do. And uh, I hope that's what you're asking. Eh? So it can be done as a block coordinator. You can actually tell them. But uh, to be honest with you, I did not tell any of my uh, co-creators uh, uh, in my course at that time. Maybe in the future, I will do so. I will tell them you can help yourself to do whatever pattern that you want to do. So this is my part that I've actually done, and and I thought that maybe that people will follow it uh, based on that, or if they want to, or but I can see some of them. Let's say, for example, physiology, they have actually done certain part. Mm. Mm. Instead of just giving uh, the slides available to them without any instruction, uh, is 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 not nice, basically. That that's my my uh, highlight that I want to highlight to everyone. Okay. Okay. But the instructions are per week, not yeah, it's per, per week, lecture. Per week, per week, per week, under the week, and everyone has a lecture. If you want yes. to do the uh, the detail of your own uh, particular lecture, then you can actually tell them. You you want okay. you can tell them. Uh, another thing, yeah, you can you can actually do that very easily in here. See, for example, this one. This one comes under, uh, this is a particular uh, assignment. And the assignment is linked to this particular uh, instruction. Please use the question assignment template to submit your question via ELIP. Now, this one, I don't need to write it anywhere. You can actually uh, do it automatically. Yeah? Automatically meaning, uh, return to my own, turn editing on. If I go to... Okay, if I go to this edit mm. settings, now you can write whatever you want to write here and give it whatever assignment that you're putting as a template here and here click this. Make sure you click this, display description on course page. When mm. you click this, then this whatever that you write here will appear on the page when the students see. Yes. So that's what you see here. Mm -mm. So you can do that in many of the things as long as you have a label there or even in a particular uh, assignment or activity that you're doing, uh, you can include whatever instruction that you want to include together with that. Okay. Okay. Um, I've got just one last thing to settle. Yeah. 
is uh, to cover how to do participation uh, participants uh, this is for uh, generally for the block coordinators and like i said now you are empowered now to actually uh, um, put in uh, whoever uh, you uh, instructors in your own course huh? you can enroll the users directly you don't have to call come to actually do it for you uh, instead you can actually do it uh, yourself huh? so here you can go um, okay let me start again huh? you select a participant okay, let me go back to dashboard okay in the dashboard you select your on your course you're weaving your course now um, you want to add a, a teacher suddenly uh, you want to add a teacher uh, the teacher's name is not in your course we you go to participants and then under participants enroll users and then under enroll users you select the role first to teacher and then you put the teacher's name okay and then if you want them to be a non-editing teacher you can also do that even some of your students uh, who are not there for some reason uh, you can actually enroll them so that's how you enroll huh? so now uh, just this information for all the block coordinators huh? Uh, or even uh, for anyone who is an admin in this particular course, they are able to actually see this enroll users uh, button, okay, to to do that. Okay, I've got one last uh, activity. Um, okay, one last activity. Can you all please uh, go and do this, please? Uh, hold on now for a while. Okay, I'm getting interesting feedback. Huh? Uh, I'll show you all here. This is a different way of uh, looking at your response. Huh? Give another one minute or so, then we can. Okay, I will share with you the, the result. Huh? Okay. okay, in Mentimeter, uh, you can give the response in a different way. You can actually view the response huh, from your students in a word cloud. Uh, word, this is called a word cloud. Huh? If you can see activity is there and close to activity is participation. Huh? Now, um, the some of the letters are bigger than the, the other one. That, that shows more people have actually selected these keywords. More people have actually selected. So therefore, it will now, now interactive has taken over from activity. So there are more people actually using, I've asked name three aspects. Huh? So there are more people using the word interactive. Earlier on in the beginning, participation was in the middle. Then participation was actually pushed off. Activity came to the middle. Now interactive has started putting. So the more you start putting in, then you'll show that the response from the, the crowd or the participants, uh, what are the words that are more uh, in tune to the participants so this is a word cloud huh? this is how you generate a word cloud and you can see the response from the crowd that you are engaging okay i hope mentimeter has uh, taught you all some ideas of how you can do uh, activities in your classroom huh? okay um i think that's it i've got i finished everything and now comes to question and answer if you have any question I'm willing to answer. I think this offer goes to any block coordinators, huh? uh, any block coordinators. Uh, if you have done your uh, ELIP page and you have done your checklist and you find that everything is uh, in order and you know that uh, your students have participated and all that, and yet you haven't seen the, the, the stars appearing or uh, the stars will only appear at the end of the semester. Uh, don't expect on the first week or second week you've already completed. Uh, it will start appearing but if it uh, if it if you don't get it uh, by the end of the semester uh, please do let me know please highlight to me and then i will ask the the person that come or to re-audit uh, whatever that they have done so uh, that's how i can actually tell everyone uh, this is for the block coordinators uh, for any other people who you want to share what how to do uh, labeling is quite uh, uh, easy, yeah? easy to do. You use your PowerPoint, you create whatever uh, examples that you want to, uh, whatever that you want to highlight, 
and then you import the PowerPoint slide as an image file. And then once it's an image file, you take the image file and uh, import it into your uh, ELIP page. So it's uh, that, that easy. Uh, that's how you can do it easily. Okay. Any question? Ashley, do you have any experience with using the forum? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do the students, uh, all the students participate? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> On, only, only the the very active ones and and people who want to contribute, they will start a chat, chat a ch chit chatting with you, and then they will give you the answer. And, uh, but some of them will actually find amazing answers. Uh, I think the rest of them, once the students uh, pop up the good answers, then the rest of them will just read the forum and that, that's it. Uh, so yeah. some of them or, are passive. They just read. Okay. Or maybe they're shy to ask questions because everybody can, can read. Before, mm. when you have face-to-face, -face, you finish your lecture and then suddenly you have a cloud of students around you asking questions. Yes. Okay. okay, online, uh, I can give you one example. What I do is that uh, uh, just uh, even for foundation blog, uh, one, I'll try to post one uh, very interesting question, which I feel is very interesting. I don't know about the rest of you all. Uh, <laughs> for example, when I, before I start a lecture on molecules of heredity, I post a, a choice activity telling, uh, can you uh, produce a baby using three genomes? Uh, mm -hmm. Every year, I find that students are very, uh, some of, only a handful, about five or six of them will actually do their homework, go search for it and then say, yes, very confidently say yes. And uh, the rest of them will say, I do not know. Some of them will outrightly say no. So based on the response of the student, then I come back to the class and then I start discussing, how did you know? I asked the students who have actually answered yes. And then mm -hmm. I'll ask them to share how they, where do they get to know? So they will actually come online and they will start telling, uh, this is how I did, this is how I searched. Uh, I took uh, what uh, Dr. Ashley has given, the keywords from there. I put it in Google and search. I hit this and then I took at a document and then I look. So they actually will tell, this is how they do it. Then I ask the same question to the rest of them. How come the rest of you all did not do it? So we have uh, questions to ask. So you can spend some time just looking at that activity, teaching them that tool how to go about doing it listening from their own uh, students uh, so it's kind of interesting then the next uh, week i will give them the information of how do you go about creating a baby using three genomes three different genomes okay mm -hmm. so how do you do it and all that then they'll become uh, fascinated on that and then then students will start putting in the forum questions uh, is this been done uh, evidence is here and then somebody else will then tell oh yeah there this has been done here so you will get the, the the forum going on your own so you don't have to actually monitor anymore then the students will learn from the forum itself so it has to be a very interesting question and then uh, they have to be motivated to actually go about looking at the, the question and getting the answers for it mm, okay but the students are still email you or WhatsApp you about questions on the lectures. Etiquette, you can actually personally. Ask, uh, personally. Okay, etiquette, uh, again, uh, no personal message. I tell them uh, you need to do, if it's something very personal, then uh -huh. you can PM me. If no means everything has to go through the WhatsApp uh, general, to the group. general group chat. Okay. So, because everybody else will learn. I don't want to post your question back. If anybody PM me, then I'll tell them, this is a very good question. Can you write it in the in the general group? Then only mm. I will address it. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, I think uh, if no other questions, then I think we can but, stop. Uh, yeah, did I actually... Yes, yes. How Go ahead. can we assess the previous uh, rotation? In the, the ELIP? How, uh, what, do, what do you mean by how do you assess? The previous rotation, because now the current uh, uh, ELIP format, uh, only we can see the, the current uh, running uh, course. Uh, we cannot assess the uh, previous uh, the rotation. Yeah, the previous rotation, probably it is in the vault. 
Go ahead. Remember the first thing that I told you that uh, whatever that is in the current semester, uh, that's what you can find. <clears throat> whatever that is in the previous semester, although it's your rotation, but if the rotation is in the uh, in the previous semester, then it yeah. will be all moved to Volt. Oh, Volt. Oh, okay. Yeah, they'll be moved to Volt. So you need to go and check in the Volt whether uh, it's available there. So okay. transferring whatever that you have done in the past to this ELIP, it can be done. can be done easily. If you cannot do it on your own, just let Calm know and they will help you to move it. <clears throat> Basically, okay. there's an there's a, there's a item called uh, backup. Backup. Huh? You backup mm -hmm. from your old course. You backup all the information. And then you, uh, once you come to the last page, the backup will tell you, you save a file. That file, then you come to elip, the present elip, then you import. Okay, then you import that file into the page, and then everything, whatever that you have it and the vault, will appear on your new elip. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Okay, if there's no question, then I think we can stop here. Thank you very much for everyone uh, for coming to this uh, workshop session. Uh, I appreciate the feedbacks and uh, your interaction with me. Um, I'll be sending the, the blended learning checklist to everyone who has attended this course, uh, this particular workshop. <clears throat> and I'll also send it to uh, everyone in the medical academic uh, academicians. Okay. Thank you very much and see you around. Thank you, Dr. Ashley. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.